Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm Donovan Brown, your host, and today we're talking to Sandra about Kanban boards. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So what do you do here at Microsoft? Well, I'm a program manager on the Kanban team in Visual Studio Team Services and Team Foundation Server. Okay, so what is a Kanban board and why would a team want to use one? Okay, so um, we'll start with the word Kanban, right? Um, that was introduced by Toyota back when they were trying to get, gain efficiencies in their um, production of cars, obviously, okay. right? And so basically what the Kanban board today does is it's an electronic board for teams to visually manage their work as it goes through the process, whatever that may be. Okay. Um, okay, so, um, but if it was used in manufacturing for vehicles, what are we doing with them in software? Uh, I think sometime uh, after Toyota really made it popular, a lot of other industries started realizing that the processes and the bottlenecks and inefficiencies that other industries face could be applied to the same type of uh, tool or tool process or, or something. Exactly. So, so we're using this board to be able to visualize the flow of our work as it starts from inception to being completed, right? Right, exactly. Okay. So I'm, I'm a certified Scrum Master, big Scrum fan, and okay. I actually use Kanban boards as part of managing my teams. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I liked about them the most was uh, something called a WIP limit, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like work yep. in progress. Can yeah. you talk to us a little bit about what work in progress is and, and why we would use it? Sure, so a lot of Kanban is about making sure that the cycle time is low. So the inception of that work item into de the development phase and then getting to the actual delivery to the customer, right? Okay. And work in progress limits really help you because they essentially set a way for teams to focus on the items that are actively in development instead of picking up something new. So a team will set a work in progress limit for their Kanban board and if that if that team goes over the limit as in they're picking up new work before finishing else something else the board would let you know and say hey why don't you go finish that item get it to delivery before you pick up something else. Got it yeah I used to have some really clever scrum teams who would take on all this work and they would burn it all down to one hour, and they would right. go grab something else and burn that down to one hour. Right. And by the end of the Eventually sprint, it looked, like, a big back, yep. yeah, it was like it looked like we burned a lot of hours, but nothing actually nothing got actually done. Got and done. a whip limit right. would have forced them to, before you go and grab that other task, finish the mm -hmm. tasks that are in there right now. Right. That's and right. our board yep. is able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so why don't you show us what our Kanban board can do? Okay, sure. We'll just jump into the demo right here. So um, the first thing I want to point out is the board lives under the work hub here. Okay. And I'll just go straight into full screen mode. And the first thing you'll see is the new column. Or actually, I'm going to rename this into my backlog since that's really what it is. And the backlog column is there for the product owner. Okay. Right? Um, the product owner can go ahead and reorder and reprioritize this. And the team, what the team's going to do is focus really on the work that's actively um, being worked on. Right? Okay. And what they'll do is pick up the next item off the top and drag it into development when they're ready. Okay. And so that's very much a pull model, which is different from other past um, models, which have been very much push. Okay. Right? Um, and so as soon as you drag something into development, you'll notice something about the development column that's a little bit different. Um, it's been split into two sub columns that are doing and done. Okay. And the nice thing about the doing and done columns are that when something is in the done column, it lets the other rest of the team know visually that, hey, I can pick up that work item and take it into verification. Okay. Right. So that's the indication that I can pull it forward into the next right. column. Does exactly. the stuff in the done side affect my whip limit? The stuff in the done side will affect your whip limit. And the way that team members know that um, something is done is by actually looking at the definition of done, right? Okay. And that's something that a team can agree to and set a standard for. And so you'll know that, you know, for this work item, the, the work item's moved into this column done because it has a pull request and it's met all the criteria on the dev checklist. Okay. Um, and then I can move it into the verification column once it's done. Okay, so why are some of them different colors? Uh, the colors are part of the styling rules, right? And we have a pretty strong, powerful functionality here in the settings cog over here that allows you to add styles okay. to these different cards. And you'll notice I have three of them available here today. Um, the one that you were pointing at, I believe, was the, with the red card on the board. And that's actually for a P1 bug, right? That means it's high priority, and so I really want to get to it quickly. And what I've basically done is named it P1 bugs, added a color that'll really jump at you, right? So red. And then set it so that the rule criteria is, if this is a priority one bug, um, then make sure that it shows up as red, right? And gotcha. it's available here. I see. And then um, why are there two different, like, there seems like there's two different lanes across yeah, there. Why absolutely. is that? 
The two different rows are um, called swim lanes, and swim lanes allow you to group group work across the same process, but separate separate features or maybe even higher priority items, gotcha. right? And so in this example, we have it set at an expedited column, right? And the expedited column basically tells the team, hey guys, this is something important. It's a P1 bug. Make sure we pick it up. I see. So okay. there's a lot of cards on here. Potentially, they could get lost in the shuffle, but by having these other exactly. lanes allows me to pull the important ones exactly. up so that they're mm -hmm. focused on by my team. Yeah, and I can actually quickly show you that. Sure. Um, so when we go into the settings, cog here, you'll see one for swim lanes, and we have our existing swim lanes already. Um, I'm actually going to add a second one for Microsoft Teams. Um, my team just recently did an integration with uh, Teams, as you might have awesome. heard. So we'll just add a swim lane here, and I'm actually going to go ahead and also add a column. I want to go and add a So you're ready free column. to customize like almost all the different aspects of this board to fit your team's current needs? Absolutely. Or, okay. yep. You can add permissions here and set it to team administrators, but yeah, it's really meant for the team to empower the team. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add that ready column. I added the Microsoft Teams swim lane. We'll save and close, and you'll see the board has now added a lane and then that column. And the reason I added the ready column is so that now, instead of having this giant backlog where the teams, uh, team members have to say, OK, is this backlog item meant for the Microsoft Teams value stream, or is it should it be expedited? I can start dragging items with the Teams tag here and prioritizing it in the ready column so that teams uh, my team members down the line can pick it up as it's prioritized. So this is almost like yeah. a lane where this is the stuff we've committed to delivering, and exactly. this is the whole backlog of everything we're right. ever going to deliver. Yeah, and okay. it's and it's committed to delivering by by the value stream, right, or by the feature. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So what else can you show us about the board? I notice it looks like there's like some signal R icon or something up there. So what happens if I'm remote and I'm using this board? Do I get to see these changes in real yeah, time? Yeah, absolutely. So the signal R, that, that uh, what is it, radio tower icon, right. is meant to let us know that live updates are on. Okay. Um, and this is a fairly recent feature. So our live updates are on, and I can actually show you a side-by-side. -side. Um, here is the uh, Kanban board available in Microsoft Teams okay. on the, what is it? left or right hand side, <laughs> and um, I'll pull this guy over, let's see, pull this guy over here, and let's say, um, you know, I'm a remote member of the team, I'm attending stand-up via Skype, I can just go ahead and say, hey, you know, I picked up this card, I'm now doing it, and you will see that card move over as well. Gotcha, and I see it actually automatically got assigned to you too, for because you're yeah, the person who exactly. it Yeah, exactly, I picked there. it up and I put it in active, so gotcha. yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what else, how else does this tie in? So we're talking about the Kanban board, and we can see that it's integrated inside of Microsoft Teams. But because it's a part of Teams services, I assume it has linkages and, and, and traceability through other parts of it. Does it link to like branches or pull requests, or how does that yeah, stuff work? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, let me just go back full screen here. And um, there's quite a few abilities, actually. So you might have noticed that there's a couple of these like yellow um, breakdown components. So we'll go there first. I have the ability to add a child task and decompose my user story. It can be used as a really quick checklist. So maybe task one, task two. Um, gotcha. So that's one option, right? And then the next option is you can add a test or even create a new branch right off of the card that you're working on. Gotcha. Right? Um, so here. You've got some tests, so test one, test two, and you have the ability to then go ahead and run those tests. Um, and this is linked to the test case hub in the test uh, in the it. test hub in VSTS. Got yeah, it. That's correct. And so, being a DevOps guy, I'm kind of thinking how this, what role this plays in a DevOps pipeline. And clearly, this is up in the agile planning where we're actually deciding what it is we're going to create, and right. then this is where we're defining the value that we want to then flow through. Mm -hmm. So does this also integrate with like our builds or our release in any way? Do I see these cards move automatically if a build is successful or a release deploys? Uh, let me see. Can I say it yet? I mean, we're, we're, we're in the process. We're working, right. we're working on some of that stuff. It's definitely top of mind for us. Okay. So you'll see those things light up pretty soon, yeah. So where would someone go if they wanted to like submit features for what they think your Kanban board should, should be? Does that have any like user voice? Yeah, or? absolutely. We we um, I'm definitely very active on user voice, um, and of course, you know, if there's any issues or anything like that, they can reach out directly to me. Or um, there's the connect as well. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm just kind of curious how how does our Kanban board stack up against other Kanban boards out in the industry? I mean, how do we compare ourselves to some of our competition? Who I assume we're not the only one with Kanban boards. How do we go about? evaluating ours against others, and mm -hmm. how do you feel that we stack up against some of the other Kanban boards? 
Um, you know, I'm a little biased, but I, I do think that the Kanban board is one of our marquee experiences in okay. Visual Studio Team Services. We've done several competes against, you know, the likes of Rally and even Jira um, to make sure that we're really, the feature parity is absolutely there. Um, I think another thing that's nice is we've got a lot of um, customization and flexibility on our Kanban I boards, whereas that. others are very prescriptive. Okay. Um, and so I think that's been like the highlight of the, of the boards for sure. We're all about organizational alignment, absolutely, but then the teams have the autonomy to make sure that the board works for their process um, instead of just a you know standard for the entire project. So when you're looking at a Kanban board, when you're when you're, I'm working with a lot of software development teams. There's so many different levels of the organization that are involved in turning an idea into a working piece of software. Mm -hmm. What level of your organization is using the Kanban board? Is this something that your C-level exec is looking at? Is this something that your dev team is looking mm -hmm. at? Like, who uses this? And yeah. is it actually able to be used by different areas of your organization? Yeah. Um, you know, I think the Kanban boards are the best for the, for the teams themselves. Okay. Um, if we take it up one step higher, we do have features and epics available as well um, if your organization is a little bit smaller in scale. So you can start creating Kanban boards to manage your features. And I'll actually flip over to that as well. So you'll see these are the user stories and bugs that the team is tracking, okay. right? But then someone like myself or my manager, Aaron, I'm sure, sure. you know, um, we might track features, right? And these are shippable increments that are really going out every three, three weeks for okay. a sprint. So if I flip over to the features board, you'll see that I have a similar Kanban board with different columns tracking the features that are then going to go out to customers. And so, yeah, we do have the hierarchy available as well. All right, so these are the features who are the parents of the items we saw on exactly. the other board. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And I asked about things automatically moving. I'm just curious. So if I move all of the children user stories of a particular feature, does that feature then move across the board automatically, or do I have to come over here and, and move No. It? However, there is an extension that we built through Microsoft DevLabs that does do that. Awesome. Um, as far as like splitting. If uh, once like an iteration is finished, you can go ahead and split the feature and move everything over. Okay. Um, to the next sprint if it's not done or move everything to the done column. Once right, so done. in our marketplace we have tons of different extensions and yeah. being a DevOps guy, I, I focus a lot on that inner part, right, the CI and the CD and I know there's tons of extensions out there right. that I can install that yeah. enhance my build and enhance my release, but you're telling me that there's some of those extensions that also enhance our Kanban experience as well? Yes, absolutely, yeah. So there's um, actually an extension point available on the cards themselves, there's extension points available on the board um, so one one that I've seen that's pretty neat is the ability to print the cards, okay. and then have it on a physical board with QR codes, right? And oh, you can actually cool. um, gauge the movement across your electronic board as well as your physical board. So that's, that's an awesome. interesting one. We also just released an open in Excel, um, and so you'll see that context menu item available there, so you can open a card in Excel. I know the main scenario for this really is to open. Um, a lot of results in a query and bulk edit them in Excel as well. Gotcha. So there's gotcha. definitely like a variety of work related extensions available in the marketplace. Very, very cool. So tell me some other things about how, so you said like different organizations. At the story level, that's your developers. Mm -hmm. Maybe your PMs or your scrum masters, right. product owners, they might be using it here. Features. But I also see that there's right. an epic level as well. Does the hierarchy go to that level as well? Yeah, absolutely. So the epics, and you'll see that breakdown too. So here, you can tell that this epic has one feature and that feature has been complete, right? Okay. And so these epics, epics generally last a lot longer. They're Absolutely. more longer-lived artifacts, right? So Absolutely. they're not going to have the same sort of uh, constant flow as you might expect down at the user story level. Um, but yeah, you, this, the more C-level or the more strategic initiatives can be tracked at the epic level. So I noticed that when I'm working on a really large application, there's multiple teams involved mm -hmm. and sometimes even multiple like team backlogs that roll up. When you go down to the user story level, can each team mm -hmm. have their own view of that Kanban board? Or is once you get to the user story level, everyone shares the same view of that Kanban board? Each team would have their own Kanban board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. absolutely. And they can customize it independently of mm -hmm. the other teams on yeah, the Yeah, they can customize it independently of the other teams. And then the nice thing is, just through the linking, we have this ability to uh, filter. Okay. And so, of course, there's like your basic core filters like assigned to. You can do at me and find the things that are just assigned to yourself, or you can filter by iteration or work item type. But the one that I really like is the parent work item 
which allows you to filter by the feature that this that the user story is associated with. Gotcha. Right? And so when you're doing a stand-up, you could say like, hey, here's this feature that we really need to get out the door, like what's going on, and you can drill down here. So maybe this, I see. this feature, right? Or you can go down to migrate legacy code, and you can see the work as it's going across just for that specific Yeah, it kind of gets rid of all the noise exactly. unless you're the focus mm -hmm. on one particular item. I also see a search icon, it looks like, on the far right-hand side. Yeah, that's just a, that's a really quick search. You can um, do, you know, I see. quick searches, and it'll filter the board. You actually have one available in your backlog as well. Let's oh, say wow. you're, the, you know, you're the product owner, you're trying to prioritize something, you've lost a card somewhere down in your backlog, and you want to get it back up there, so we have one there available as well too. Now, traditionally, Kanban is associated with agile kind of kind of methodologies, mm -hmm. and inside of Team Services and TFS, we we not only support agile and Scrum, but also CMMI. Is that Kanban board also available for the CMMI template, or is this yes, only in, okay. absolutely? It's it's available out of the box across all three templates, and we're going to support the workflows there as well. Awesome. So, is there anything else that you want to show us about this particular thing, or have we touched um, on a lot of it? I think we've touched on quite a bit. I do. I do want to mention, you know, the tag colors are another thing that I've customized on this view. So blocked is not out of box red or anything like that. I've added that tag color and then teams sure. is green, uh, darker green and performance is a lighter green. The other thing I'd want to mention is um, keyboard shortcuts. So if oh, wow. you just shift question mark, you have um, global keyboard shortcuts, but also shortcuts for the Kanban board. And that's really great because you can imagine like setting focus onto a single card and being able to move it up and down your board without really touching your mouse. Perfect. So I see the, the fractions up here, and these are the actual whip limits yep. for these particular columns. Yeah. Are, are those soft or hard? If, like, what I mean by that is if I'm over my whip limit and I yeah. try to drag something, can it like bounce back to let me know that I'm over, or does it uh, let me go over my whip no, limit? No, we won't, we won't bounce you back, but nah, we will give you... I might have you, to write that extension myself. We, yeah, maybe. <laughs> we will give you um, a nice little red red indicator, right? So let's say I drop it into development. You've gone over your whip limit. So not only does the column title turn red, but you'll oh, also see. see that you're six out of five now and that you've been red. Gotcha, yep. gotcha, gotcha. Well, this has been an amazing tour of our Kanban board. So I want to thank cool. you so I'm much glad. for coming. Thank you so much for having oh, me. Oh, no, my, it was my, my pleasure. So thanks for joining us here on Visual Studio Toolbox. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.